out of the total number of questions asked, highest number of questions are asked from infections and tumors. Osteomyelitis, tumor, along with basis of fracture, like non-union of fractures. This topic has been asked many, many, many times. Okay. And in gynecology, you can see 50% of the question, 50% of the question are just from three topics. So if you're studying fibrous today, or if you're studying some other topic today, if you're going through anatomy of female genital tract today, then you're doing a big mistake. You have to first go through these three topics. Okay. Yes. So in pathology, you will note that maximum number of questions are not asked from gender pathology as against INSAT. Maximum number of questions are asked from hematology, oncology, and rheumatology. Out of that, rheumatology contribution is very little, but hemat onco maximum number of questions are asked. And if you're starting from uh, papillary stomach disorders, you're making a big mistake because it is very difficult to study that. And plus, the number of questions that have been asked is also very less. So always start from infection. Going in the wrong direction. If you're walking in the wrong direction, then it is very difficult for you to uh, get the target that you achieved. Okay, so right direction is what I'm giving you based on not my experience, not what others say, not what toppers say. Uh, it is purely what according to what NBMS is saying. Okay, according to what examiners have been shown uh, in the past uh, few years, according to that pattern based on statistics, I'm showing you the right path. So which are the repeat questions that have been asked? Important topic: general pathology study everything, but out in that also inflammation, cell injury, and genetic. These three chapters maximum number of questions have been asked. Hematology oncology study everything again. I can't actually tell you what is important. Everything is important in that. CVS three topics have been repeated here. That is rheumatic fever, myocardial infarction, those changes, and myocardial disease. So what is the strategy for pharmacology? First thing, general pharmacology. General pharmacology plus ENS, then infection, then hematology. This carries the most important part. This covers up to 75 to 80 percent of your topics. This is the proof that INS ATP PYQs is not equal to need PYQs. Previous so, questions are the only markers of the uh, repetitive uh, topics that are asked. There is nothing else. Okay. <laughs>
So this was the second video which I released on Neat PG that is prepondment strategy. And in this video, which was seen by 19,000 people, I had discussed how to manage time first, how to manage time. I had given a timetable and I had also given a consolidated worksheet, a consolidated table for each subject source. If you have not watched this, you go behind and watch this because I had discussed this for two subjects, two main important subjects that is pediatrics and psychiatry. So today we'll be discussing for the rest of the subjects. So first for pediatrics, we had discussed how infections is important, general pediatrics is important. These two covered most of the syllabus in NEET as against INICT, where in INICT we saw that pediatric questions are coming down, but in NEET pediatrics was our number one subject. Neonatology, systemic peds, I had said you how to uh, study in a systematic manner. Also, I, we had discussed on biochemistry, how vitamins was the kingmaker in biochemistry and the rest important topics. All these videos are covered in this video, that is NEET 2024 preponement strategy. So today we'll be going to uh, our third subject that is surgery. So coming to surgery, I had divided this surgery topics according to PYQ uh, since past six years and uh, I had divided the topic like general surgery, thoracic and vascular where vascular mainly consists of peripheral arterial diseases and varicose veins chapters, upper GI up to liver and pancreas, lower GIT from intestines till, uh, uh, anal, uh, till anus and then from uh, trauma a separate chapter urology uh, breast i have included separately because there are many questions asked from breast and then endocrine which includes mainly thyroid so from this what did i uh, realize i realized two things one is general surgery carries 35 percent of the total questions asked and you upper gi carried 34 of the total percent of the questions asked so these two topics general git and uh, sorry general uh, uh, surgery and lower uh, uh, sorry upper git has had the most important uh, advantage in neat pg okay and also questions were frequently asked from endocrine and you see breast topic in breast topic na, continuously one or two questions are asked since it is a very small topic still questions are mainly asked from breast chapter whereas trauma every year one two or three questions are asked so you can't leave small topics like breast and trauma breast and trauma are very important whereas uh, to big topics are lower GIT where very few questions are asked still carries less importance compared to this so we also compared how old neat and new neat surgery questions are changed and we'll see this analysis in the further slides so in this uh, the i had uh, i had make the graphical representation of this and you will see that upper git and general uh, surgery co covers most of the topics asked for neat uh, exams according to previous year topics okay so i made a pie chart out of this and you can see that this general surgery okay general surgery upper git thoracic plus vascular thoracic there is actually nothing asked but vascular there are many questions asked, especially from varicose veins and from peripheral arterial diseases from aneurysm many questions were asked from berry aneurysm okay so don't miss that topic then you can see that breast carries six percent of the topics endocrine carries ten percent of the topics and trauma carries nine so if you study general surgery plus thoracic plus vascular compartment endo breast and trauma you will be covering almost 50 percent of the topics in least amount of time so this is, uh, uh, see, no one can predict what uh, examiner will ask for the upcoming NEET PG 2024 exam. But at least we can predict what will be asked. This is all based on probability that these amount of questions were asked previously. So we take an assumption that these questions will be asked in future. There is nothing other uh, other than previous year questions which will uh, which will predict what will be asked in the upcoming exam. Uh, previous year questions are the only markers of the uh, repetitive uh, topics that are asked. There is nothing else. Okay. So... Moving, moving ahead for old NEET and new NEET pattern, you can see that general surgery, almost same questions were asked in new NEET also and old NEET also. This red color is new NEET and blue color is old NEET. But from upper GIT, less number of questions have been asked. You'll also note that from trauma, more questions are asked. So in the last three years, more questions are asked from trauma. And from trauma, two very important topics that are asked. One is pneumoperitoneum and the other one is pneumothorax. These questions are asked repeatedly. Then again, you will see that breast, few questions are asked. Endo also number of questions are coming down. But trauma and uh, general surgery you have to focus much because according to last three years prediction more number of questions can be asked then these are the important questions that have been previously repeated questions okay and these numbers suggest how many times they have been repeated for example pneumothorax you'll see it has been repeated four times thyroidectomy trauma management parathyroidectomy suture materials see suture materials is a topic which not many students touch upon this has been asked frequently image based questions have been asked from suture materials pneumoperitoneum as i said trauma trauma see these ulcers arterial ulcers varicose veins 
means okay peripheral arterial disease again peripheral arterial disease has been asked three four times so you can actually see a pattern that is growing up so vascular general and uh, uh, the other one is trauma okay these three topics along with breast which is asked repeatedly which is a short topic these are the topics to be focusing on okay you can take a screenshot of these uh, photos so now coming to the strategy for surgery strategy for surgery is very simple maximum questions are asked in neat pg from surgery this we discussed in the crack neat pg 2024 uh, video where i discussed how surgery's graph is going up from 12 to 13 questions in 2018-19 in 2023 up to 24 25 questions were asked surgery is one of the top most uh, subject from which maximum questions have been asked in neat pg so surgery is a topic which you which you should focus on and you shouldn't leave anything behind so maximum question is asked from surgery so you have to make your concept very strong in surgery that's why in my uh, in my this uh, worksheet where i had discussed what all to study for surgery for surgery you have to watch revision videos every revision video because you can't afford to lose anything at least out of the upcoming 24 or 25 questions which will be asked in the upcoming exam you have to answer at least 17 or 18 based on revision videos only revision videos at least you have to answer 17 or 18 or you are out of the game so the easiest method to go through that is through the revision videos and from the main videos you have to go through important topics only now which are the important topics breast endo uh, and endo uh, uh, sorry endocrinology in endocrinology you have mainly thyroid thyroidectomy and thyroid disorders parathyroidectomy and men's syndrome these three topics are repeatedly asked from endocrinology and then trauma trauma you have to read everything from main videos and also you have to read everything from q bank because trauma is one topic which if you master you can actually score two or three questions correct in upcoming uh, neat exam okay then vascular again peripheral arterial disease along with aneurysm topic along with varicose veins then come general surgery general surgery again questions are varied but especially suture materials are very important question okay then come to upper git lower GIT, and euro carries least importance because the weightage is less according to the subject which is covered the number of questions that are asked is very less so then you have to go to previous year mcq and discussion because surgery is a concept based topic so unless you know the concept and how to apply it you won't be knowing how to answer this question so you have to go through previous year questions and mcq discussion videos okay then coming to images especially the suture materials and technique i'm telling this because as you can note from surgery two or three image based questions were rushed and these are based on suture materials only so Suture techniques only. So these questions are being frequently asked. So you, either you can go through your image bank or you can go through pearls or treasures or any other source where you can go through these images because these specific images carries a lot of significance. Then time. How much time can you spend for surgery since it is a subject which is which has very much weightage. So for this upcoming revision for uh, NEET PG, you have to give at least seven days. Okay, I'm sorry, maximum seven days. If you cover within four five days, it is fine. But you have to give maximum uh, sorry uh, at least uh, sorry maximum seven days for this surgery. And then BTR and DVT is very important for this topic because this is a, a large subject. Okay, for a big subject with so much questions asked, you can't afford to lose uh, your marks in simple topics. So when there is a big subject, now then you will be uh, losing marks because you won't be able to cover whole subject so that then btr and dvt comes into picture okay so we have discussed everything every strategy possible for surgery okay keep it in mind surgery is a very important topic so you can't miss surgery now with surgery i had told in my previous video how you have to combine ortho so ortho if you see i have divided topics as upper limb topics lower limb then spine and pelvis basics basics especially fractures then infection infection especially osteomyelitis osteomyelitis is a recurrently asked topic and then tumors okay bone tumors is also very frequently asked topic in neat pg then systemic disorders along with joint disorders along with metabolic bone disease and instruments see what you can see here out of the total number of questions asked highest number of questions are asked from infections and tumors osteomyelitis tumor along with basis for fracture like non-union of fractures this topic has been asked many 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 times maximum number of questions have been asked from there okay spine and pelvis where i don't know how much you waste your time only one question has been asked lower limb also five question has been asked and every year only one question repeats Sorry, fracture shaft of femur okay so this fracture femur shaft causing pulmonary embolism is the most frequently asked question you go and see every year that's why uh, stress upon because uh, some people ask me in my comments and also in my uh, chat that how can we trust so much on pyqs see when fracture femur uh, question is asked so many times so that means every year examiner is fond of that question that means it will definitely repeat 
that is the only guarantee that you have or else you have to study all ortho you can't study every, all from everything from ortho in the uh, in a span of two or three days so what you have to study you have to study which has been frequently asked okay and upper limb especially upper limb inj nerve injuries has been asked frequently okay a fracture is given which is a nerve that is damaged a fracture is given which is artery that is damaged okay and from old knee to uh, new knee also we will see the comparison so as you can see here upper limb infection tumor and this uh, joint disorders also this three topics maximum questions have been asked so if you are confused in the last few days of need pg how to study for ortho then go ahead with these three topics first start with infection then bone tumors then basics of fractures and then go to upper limb then come to uh, systemic and joint disorders so this is the topic you can see see basics of fracture infection tumors carries almost 35 percent okay and then upper limb carries almost 25 percent then systemic metabolic disorders carries this so almost you can get up to 80 percent questions you can just study from these three topics got my point next so what is the strategy for ortho so what you have to study you have to study in this order first bone tumors then osteomyelitis, nerve injuries, femur fracture, fracture basics and arthritis. This is the pattern you should go about. Okay. Time, you can give maximum three days. And according to my previous worksheet, what are the sources that you should use? Revision videos. Okay. Revision videos for these specific topics. Main videos don't work because you don't, if you don't have much time. Previous questions you have to go through. Pearls, especially for these fractures, name of the fractures, eponyms, these pearls are very important or treasures. Cube and go through selected topics like for bone tumors, for osteomyelitis, for nerve injuries of a you can selectively go through QBank, MCQ discussion videos you have to watch so that you get, an, uh, get a hold on the topic and then recent updates and YouTube for recall videos you don't have to watch. Then QBank, uh, as I said, you should focus on these three topics, MCQ discussion if time allows and image bank you have to go for ortho because I see that many people don't go for, from, to image bank because these fractures, no, their names and what is the finding that you get in the image that carries a lot of significance in neat PG. See neat PG, it's not like mainly one liners. It is mainly they, we need, uh, in the, the questions give you many hints. Okay. And if you catch one of these hints in the images, then you can get it right or at least you can eliminate option. So that is the main role of images. Okay. So now from ortho, we'll go to the third subject combination that is pharmacology plus psychiatry. So pharmacology in NEET, okay, every time um, I get this question that uh, is, uh, if we sh should we study NEET and INICT prerequisites both for NEET exam or uh, does INICT prerequisites don't apply for NEET exam? So we'll see this as a case study from pharmacology, okay? Because in pharmacology, I can actually tell you with proof. See, in pharmacology, the maximum topics that have been asked is from general pharmacology plus ENA. This is the most important topic in NEET PG as well as infection where 25 questions were asked. 33 plus 25, almost 50 questions, more than 50 questions have been asked from general pharmacology plus ANS plus infections only. Now see for less important topics, see like renals, only four questions, GIT, only five questions, okay, and endocrine, very few questions. In last last year, no questions were asked. RS, only two questions so far. So systemic pharmacology carries less importance, but you see CNS. CNS only 10 questions have been asked. Do you remember if you go to my previous INICT video on pharmacology and from that I have taken this slide, you can see that CNS carried 29 questions, 29 questions out of 126, that was almost 25%, uh, okay? 25% of the questions were just asked from uh, CNS in INICT, but in NEET you can see only 10 questions have been asked. This is the proof that INICT PYQs is not equal to NEET PYQs. So keep that in mind, INICT PYQs has a separate set of favorite questions and NEET PYQs have a separate set of uh, uh, favorite questions. I'll also tell this in Psychiatry how this is important, okay? So uh, we'll move ahead and you'll see that general pharmacology along with ANS and infection carry most importance and after that if you want to study you have to go through CVS and then renals because renals is small. But rest of the things carry very less importance and hemat onco also carries slightly a slight significance. Okay, this is not based on my experience, this is based on statistical uh, statistical uh, data that I got. Okay, and then uh, if you see this general pharmacology along with infections along with cvs actually there are not many topics to study along with hemat onco and renals you can cover up to 75 to 80 percent so though you don't have to study entire pharmacology many questions are asked from the selected topics only then coming to old neat and new neat pattern here you will notice a very important thing that number of general pharmacology questions have come down over the last few years but serious questions have remained the same rs no, rs questions have been asked in new neat exam pattern only okay red one is new neat okay hemat oncology questions have increased 
hematology questions have increased in the past three years and then infections also number of questions had decreased as i said you in the previous uh, crack neat pg 2024 video that number of questions in pharmacology has come down over the past three years it is not like inict where number of questions are going on increasing it is coming down okay so out of that you will see that most of the, uh, the that's why the uh, there is less number of questions asked in new need pattern okay and these are the important topics that have been repeated you will see that some topics have been repeated many times you can take screenshot of this video anyway i don't think this carries much significance because in the next slide i'll tell you how to read pharmacology so what is the strategy for pharmacology first thing general pharmacology general pharmacology plus ans then infection then hematonco this carries the most important part this covers up to 75 to 80 percent of your topics then next cns is not important that's why cn ini ct pyq is not equal to need pyq so ini pyq is not equal to need pyq keep this in mind next time before you ask me in my chat box or when you ask me um, uh, when you send me email on my mail id so first see this video watch this video ini ct pyq is not equal to need pyq need pyq has a separate fan base ini ct pyq has a separate fan base okay third old need versus new need tells us that hemat oncology is up coming in new uh, need pattern and cns is uh, importance is going down in new need pattern because you can see that in cns one or two questions only have been asked in the past three years okay then where to study from this is very important for pharmacology whatever you are studying study the most recent uh, material because if you are reading four years earlier book or some seniors xerox no that is not going to help because pharmacology is ever going on updating every day okay so you have to mainly focus on coaching apps only for pharmacology and images especially one image which uh, actually uh, was asked multiple times was mechanism of action of antifungals and that to uh, azole group of antifungal this was asked i think in three or four neat question papers so don't miss this topic from antimicrobials you expect image based questions the other part where you can expect is from the graph from general pharmacology okay so in pharmacology what you have to study you have to study all revision videos especially for these three topics which i told you then you have to study main videos especially for general pharmacology because many questions have been asked from there then if you don't understand any concept go back to general uh, main videos or notes and revise that topic then pyqs you have to go through pearls you have to go through questions bank question bank solve for general pharmacology again because it is applicable application type of question mcq discussion you have to watch for pharmacology discussion videos okay and recent updates is a must for pharmacology then q bank problems from general pharmacology and don't forget recent update because recent updates are also asked in NEET pg although it is mainly asked in INICT. So what are some of the important topics in pharmacology? So these are the important topics in general ANS and uh, in general pharmacology and ANS study everything. Everything because 33 questions have been asked in the past six years. Infections, antifungal and ATT, these two topics are frequently asked. From GIT, I don't know for what reason, laxatives has been asked many times and metoclopramide has been asked many times. From renals, diuretics and vaptans have been asked. From RS, asthma has been asked. Only asthma is a question that has been asked. From CVS, see again, this is one contradiction, contradiction from INICT PYQ because in INICT, antiarrhythmics are very less asked, but in NEET PG, antiarrhythmics have been asked three, four times. So you have to focus on antiarrhythmics in NEET PG, but not in INI, plus antihypertensives have been asked and from endo uh, endocrine especially bisphosphonates have been asked so these are the important topics on pharmacology that you should focus in so when so many topics are there i am actually guiding you where to start from so that in if such a question comes in uh, neat pg your maximum focus should be on those questions got my point next we'll be going to psychiatry so in psychiatry you will see that I have divided this topic according to basics of psychiatry. Okay, then neurotic and psychotic disorders. Neurotic disorders, psychotic disorders. Then cognitive disorders and mood disorders. So this mood disorders include depression and BPD, all this come under this mood disorders. Then substance abuse. Why I have given separate column for substance abuse, you will get to know in the next slide. Then sleep and eat disorders and rest of the topics. See, rest of the topics, only one question has been asked. That means psychiatry repeatedly questions are asked from these headings only. So from basics, you can't accept because basics is a bit uh, a broad topic. But from neurotic and psychiatric disorders alone, nine questions have been asked. From cognitive, especially Alzheimer's, from mood disorders like depression, okay, 13 questions have been asked. From substance abuse a small topic maybe one chapter maybe one q bank six questions have been asked and every year one or two questions have been asked from substance disorder okay from sleep and eating disorder also only two questions have been asked so see uh, if you study cognitive plus mood disorders plus neurotic disorders plus psychiatric disorders sorry psychotic disorders you have completed almost 70 percent of your total topics 
this is where you should focus on psychiatry then substance abuse you add to it you have completed almost 80 percent of your total topics rest of the topics have been asked less frequently got my point so psychiatry again is a very easy subject to study if you know what to study then coming to old need versus new need pattern, you'll see a very important finding that from basics, no questions have been asked in new need pattern that is in the past three years. From neurotic disorders and cognitive disorders, they have been asked. From substance abuse also, they have been asked. But you'll note one more important thing that number of psychiatric questions in new need pattern have come down. So last three years, number of psychiatric questions have come down drastically. Got my point? Uh, but in INICT, this is not the case. In INICT, number of psychiatric questions have gained importance because Nimans is preparing question paper. So, what is the strategy for psychiatry? First, go through this. Was, these were the questions that were frequently uh, asked. Okay, one was postpartum psychosis and postpartum depression. This question has been asked, I think, three or four times. So, never miss this topic. This comes under mood disorders. Alzheimer's again has been asked three or four times. Substance abuse has been asked repeatedly. Depression, sleeping, and eating disorder. These are the five topics. See, when I tell you that main video or notes has covered five topics, we have to cover five topics from that. Then, these are those five topics. These are those five topics which are uh, uh, useful for NEET PG. Okay, then you have to watch revision videos for the rest of the topics. Even if you leave, also it's fine. INICT is not equal to NEET PG in CNS pharmacology because we saw that from uh, in INICT CNS pharmacology was repeatedly asked, but in INIS, uh, sorry in INICT, but in NEET PYQ, not a single question from CNS pharmacology has been asked. Very very few questions have been asked. Okay, then you have to go through PYQs. Pearls also you have to go through QBank. I said again, go through only these five topics. Then MCQ discussion videos. You, if you have time, you watch. Okay, pearls and treasures carries much importance because uh, these pearls and treasures will actually give you a cutting edge because these are like memorization type, which are the anti the typical antipsychotics, atypical antipsychotics, their side effects. Okay, or you can get questions on like sleep disorders, eating disorders. So uh, they are like less time consuming, but you will get more output in return. Time you can dedicate to psychiatry is up to three days and don't waste time on CNS pharmacology because very few questions are asked since 2021 and BTR or DVT. Again, I'll say for psychiatry is very important because you are going to miss some topics that that topics will be covered in BTR and DVT. Got my point? So psychiatry is done here. So we have covered three subject combinations so far. So we'll go for the fourth subject combination that is pathology. So in pathology, you will note that maximum number of questions are not asked from general pathology as against INICT, maximum number of questions are asked from hematology, oncology and rheumatology. Out of that, rheumatology contribution is very little, but hematonco maximum number of questions are asked and you will note that it has gone up to nine questions per year. However, in general pathology, specific set of questions are asked frequent. I'll say you which one. Okay. Then after that, if you see that rest every system, whatever the system is, it has no significance at all. Very few questions are being asked. Even if you do, it's fine because you'll cover that in medicine or in pediatrics somewhere. Okay. And then coming to GIT, you'll see from last three years, not a single question has been asked in GIT pathology. That's so you can expect one question this year or maybe this year also NBMS will uh, support my theory and then GIT questions won't be asked. Okay. So we'll go to the topics that are asked, you'll see how hematonco is the most important topic. So in pathology, if you're starting with respiratory system or endocrine system, or you're going for general pathology first, you're doing a pretty big mistake. You have to always go with hematoncology first, followed by general pathology. And then rest of the topics, I think they don't carry any significance because it is not worth when your time is limited. You can see here, hematoncology plus general pathology. And then you have this, uh, you have this renals where small topic these three topics three four topics uh, will cover almost 65 to 70 percent next old need plus new need pattern again hemat oncology number of questions have been the same before and now number of questions in general pathology has come down overall number of questions in pathology has come down as we had seen in crack need pg 2024 video if you have not seen it go back and watch it and you'll see that cns in new need pg pattern no questions have been asked from pathology okay next so old versus new need pathology for uh, what is the uh, pattern that we see new need zero questions are asked from GIT. Okay, so you can expect one question this year. Less questions have been asked totally in new need uh, pattern. But we saw that how in INICT pathology was very important pathology every year some 20 or 25 questions were asked, but it is not so in need PG current pattern. Hamat onco same number of questions have been asked and three systems if you ask me, you have to focus on according to last three year questions that is general pathology plus hamat onco plus RS because RS few questions have been asked say number of questions are increasing from respiratory system and we'll see in detail which topics to study from each of these systems so what is the strategy for pathology it is simple repeat questions are less from pathology so it is 
very difficult to predict. Uh, it was very difficult for me to predict which are the common questions also. Okay, not many questions are repeated from pathology, especially from systemic pathology where repeat questions are also less and number of questions are also less. So if you give time to that, you are not going to gain anything. Okay, so most questions, however, which are repeated are from general pathology only. So general pathology, hemat oncology, you have to study everything. Everything from your notes, main notes or your uh, 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 whatever source that you are using, you have to study everything for general pathology and hematology. Image questions are very important because these image questions will actually give one edge uh, over uh, your preparation. Time you can allot up to six days of time and BTR and DVT again becomes very important because uh, this is a big subject and it is very difficult to keep in touch all the most important asked questions. Okay, so according to my worksheet, what are the topics that uh, which are the sources that you have to focus on? Revision videos is a must main videos I had given this red mark here but I would suggest for general pathology and hemat oncology if you have time go through main videos or go through the notes it is very important okay PYQs you have to go uh, pearls and treasures you have to go Q bank selected topics only again MCQ discussion and YouTube you can go to recall videos if you have difficulty in application type especially for hemat oncology okay and pathonist questions are difficult even for me okay I was not able to predict exact questions which could come in the upcoming new exams so next which are the repeat questions that have been asked important topic general pathology study everything but out in that also inflammation cell injury and genetic these three chapters maximum number of questions have been asked hemat oncology study everything again i can't actually tell you what is important everything is important in that cvs three topics have been repeated yeah that is rheumatic fever myocardial infarction those changes and myocarditis cns neuromuscular disease especially huntington's disease and alzheimer's has been asked rs alpha 1 antitrypsin has been asked twice and occupational lung disease has been asked twice endo Endocrine, thyroid, cervical cancer has been asked twice. Okay, reproduction, uh, reproductive system I have included in endocrine. Renals, nephrotic syndrome and renal cell carcinoma has been asked. And GIT, achalasia and celiac disease has been asked. So, not much to gain, but these topics, if you do have lack of time, go through these topics at least because these have been asked previously. So, now coming on to the counterpart of pathology that is dermatology. So, in dermatology, you will note that uh, maximum questions in dermatology have been asked from infections. Okay, repeatedly for every year from infections, maximum number of questions are these are bacterial infection, viral infections, fungal infections, okay, and even parasitic infections. Then, sexually transmitted infection also four questions have been asked, only one chapter, but four questions, okay. And then, allergic also from allergic disorders also questions have been asked. And the most toughest part of dermatology was papillosquamous disorders, okay, this psoriasis lichen planus and from these you uh, so far only three questions have been asked okay so if you're feeling difficult you can actually give less importance to these topics and from basics and from acne also few questions have been asked so if you study infections okay infection is the most important part along with sexually transmitted infections and allergy and this acne these four topics cover almost 75 percent of the total dermat syllabus okay Next, old neat pattern versus new pat neat pattern. In the last three years, increasing number of questions have been asked from infection. Maximum number of questions have been asked again from infection and from acne also more number of questions have been asked from the last three years. So what is the strategy for dermatology? For dermatology, what you have to study? First, go and study infections. If you're starting from uh, papillosquamous disorders, you're making a big mistake because it is very difficult to study that. And plus, now number of questions that have been asked is also very less. So always start from infections. Then go to sexually transmitted infections, then allergies, acne plus alopecia, then skin lesion. These five topics carries maximum significance. And for these five topics, you have to watch from main videos, okay? Because these five are very important topics, okay? Main videos. And if you're thorough with the, uh, if you want to be thorough with the rest of the topics you can go through the revision videos then pyqs is a must pearls is a must q bank whatever these topics i have mentioned above solve those questions from q bank because those questions are more uh, about, about to be asked in the upcoming neat exams then study infection full because you don't have to miss this topic because these are very important topics especially viral infections okay then main video you have to watch infection plus sexually transmitted infections plus allergy and google solve q bank also recent updates are important in dermatology watch mcq discussions uh, videos if you want fine tuning okay then you watch mcq discussion videos image bank in dermatology one thing that you can actually uh, that can actually help you uh, gain marks is image bank because all these images all these images in neat pg are uh, very important especially for dermatology 
okay this will give you hints so that you can at least rule out the option that that's how you can increase your probability of getting the answers right bta dvt is again important because you are going to miss the specific topics not by leaving those topics but by uh, forgetting those topics so bta and dvt will help you in memorization in this subject okay and you can allocate up to three days for dermatology so what are the important topics i said again hsv hp with these two viral infections with leprosy these are very important acanthosis question has been asked repeatedly okay i think three or four question papers acanthosis was asked alopecia uh, was asked recently atopic dermatitis fungal infections and sti are very important also sexual transmitted diseases are also again asked very frequently in gynecology so if you study here you can cover that in gynecology also okay so we'll go on to the next subject combination that is obj so in obg uh, you will see that i have divided topics that basics of obg which covers anatomy physiology embryology then anc and normal pregnancy okay the nine months of normal pregnancy three tri trimester then comes labor then obstetric complications like pph twin pregnancy molar pregnancy then medical and surgical complications like pih gestational diabetes liver diseases cardiac diseases then general gynecology everything except this sti that is sexually transmitted infections contraception and infertility these three topics i have clubbed together you will know why tumors i have clubbed separately and instruments okay and you will note from this that maximum number of questions have been asked from these three topics only these three small topics from gynecology covers most of the number of questions that have been asked so far that is sexual transmitted infection along with contraceptive methods along with infertility these three topics carries the maximum significance okay so we'll go to this graph you'll see that these three topics cover maximum uh, this one along with obstetric complication especially pph molar pregnancy okay twin pregnancy multiple number of questions have been asked from this so if you're going through labor as your first, first video then you're doing a big mistake because from labor less questions have been asked from tumors also only cervical carcinoma has been asked frequently even vaginal carcinoma and ovarian carcinoma has been asked but they are asked very less frequently okay so next coming to this topic see i have divided this separately for obstetrics you have to go through obstetric complication which is the main topic then go through this medical and surgical complication this will be easy because they are not core obstetric okay uh, medical and surgical complication you can actually correlate with other subjects then you have to go through uh, the anc and normal uh, pregnancy because there also number of questions asked are more so by this you can cover uh, almost 70 to 80 percent of obj and in gynecology you can see 50 percent of the question 50 percent of the question are just from three topics so if you're studying fibroids today or if you're studying some other topic today if you're going through anatomy of female genital tract today then you're doing a big mistake you have to first go through these three topics sti contraception and infertility then go through the tumors because it is very short topic then you go through general gynecology at last if you get time okay and i'll tell you what to focus on also again this if you take it as a whole okay obg then STS again carries maximum significance, obstetric compli complications along with medical surgical OBG complications along with uh, this uh, uh, general gynecology. This covers almost 75% of the total topic along with tumors. Okay. So these are the four or five very important topics, not very lengthy topics, but very important topics. Now coming to old need versus new need pattern, there are a few findings here. See, first of all, First of all, number of questions, this red is new need, okay? Number of questions in OBG asked in new need pattern are more. That means in the last three years, more number of OBG questions have been asked than gynec questions. We know that overall OBG questions, some uh, 87 questions have been asked in the past six years and gynecology 60 questions have been asked. But in the last three years, number of OBG questions are more than gynecology. This is again in contradiction with INICT, where number of questions in gynecology was more than OBG and gynecology carried more significance. But in... Uh, uh, but in uh, neat pg in neat pg obstetric questions have we are uh, carrying more significance than gynecology that's why in the past three years more number of ob questions are asked obstetric questions are asked okay and these gynec questions were asked frequently in the old neat pattern okay however in gynecology also this sta topic still carries the maximum significance in new neat pattern also 
okay so strategy for obj is very simple it is one of the very high yielding topic obj after surgery carries the second highest number of questions that are asked so you no matter what you are not going to skip obj so revision videos are must because you have to get strong hold on the concepts in obj so that you don't miss anything like whatever the important topics i said from that also you shouldn't miss anything that's why you have to go to revision videos so that your concepts are very strong and you watch main videos if your concepts are not good selected topics you can watch from main videos so revision videos are very much important and main videos certain topics pyqs along with pearls and treasures pearls especially sexually transmitted infection where there are sti kits contraceptive methods cervical carcinoma grading and management gestational diabetes monitors cut off values see all these small small things from this pearls or treasures or btr or dvt they are very helpful for you when concept based questions are asked in neat pg and expect concept based questions from obg at any cost okay more questions are asked from obstetrics so study everything from sti plus these five topics study everything don't leave anything okay these five topics you have to study everything btr plus dvt becomes very very important here because obg is again a big topic many important repeated questions are asked so you are not going to miss any of these questions okay youtube recall videos or mcq discussion videos you can watch it is better if you watch because your concepts will get stronger and time allocation up to 7 days is mandatory because obg is a big subject and maximum number of questions are also asked from obg that is after surgery second comes opc so which are the important questions see so this sti plus uh, contraception plus uh, uh, infertility i said you know you can see here how many questions are asked see so this is sti oral contraceptive pills pid many questions are being asked this uh, infertility that you see you know some 7 to 8 questions are asked in the past 6 years very important topic infertility then again you can see this donovanos is again sti contraceptives okay tubectomy is again contraceptives estrogen hrt is contraceptives hpv is sti so all these topics are not asked once but they are asked multiple times so these three topics you are not going to miss okay then coming to rest of the topics like from obstetric complications you can note that so this is from labor from labor very few repeated questions have been asked not many questions have been asked, and these have been asked once or twice only again from this topic this is uh, this is the normal anc and normal pregnancy multiple questions have been asked from obstetric score oligohydramnios and polyhydramnios and antenatal care these three topics maximum questions have been asked and these are obstetric complications and from obstetric complication maximum number of questions on pph see here again pph okay pph then second topic is twin pregnancy twin pregnancy okay and uh, then uh, questions have been asked on uh, a uh, molar pregnancy gestational trophoblastic blushing neoplasia these three topics are again important then from uh, anatomy basics okay one very important question that has been asked is mesonephric duct paramesonephric duct developmental anomalies mullerian duct anomalies this this question also you are not supposed to miss then coming to uh, gynecology i don't think anything is very important only one thing which i noticed is primary amenorrhea which keeps on repeating fibroids keep on repeating and uh, uh, one more is hysterectomy keep on repeating okay and then from medical complication gestational diabetes mellitus preeclampsia help these three questions keep on repeating so these are the important topics from obg so obg you are not going to miss okay next uh, we are going to the last topic that is forensic medicine in forensic medicine i had condensed to this one because it is not worth going through each years uh, previous questions and maximum questions have been asked from toxicology but again toxicology uh, as you know it is very big topic so uh, i would suggest you go through legal aspects first because it is small topic and you can cover it identification four questions have been asked identification means is identify fa- fa- uh, sorry um, f- fingerprints all those things okay thanatology is autopsy and postmortem changes three questions have been asked injury again you have to focus because you can expect questions in neat pg from injury asphyxia number of questions are less but sexual offenses and psychiatry again more number of questions are been asked okay so what is the strategy for forensic medicine it is simple don't give much time for forensic medicine go to the main videos or your notes in the following uh, order okay first you have to go to sexual offenses then psychiatry that is forensic psychiatry then go to legal aspects toxicology toxicology uh, if you have uh, if you are facing difficulty then go through metallic poisons okay toxidromes these are repeatedly asked okay plant poisons snake bite these four questions are worth uh, worth studying okay then injury then i didn't uh, injury also like they'll give images like of laceration or contusion and they'll ask questions based on that so it will be a clinical based question then identification and thanatology if you have time then last asphyxia because asphyxia is such a big topic it is very difficult you can, uh, questions have been asked on drowning drowning and strangulation
okay then important topics again out of these are ipcs very important every year one or two questions have been asked medical negligence very important case will be given like doctor did so and so what which type of negligence is it then post mortem changes injury then sexual offenses plant poison these are repeatedly asked topics and it is again very difficult to predict forensic topics because uh, number of questions are asked also are not that high and every year new new questions are asked so it is difficult only these important topics are I have kept on repeating okay so very important thing okay last before i conclude this video very important message is that it's better if you don't if you have not studied ipc so far it's better you uh, don't study ipc because ipc has been uh, is going to be scrambled okay and according to uh, indian government new uh, that uh, new uh, law order is going to come that is bharatiya nyaya samhita okay ipc was introduced way earlier late, earlier okay so now they have introduced new bharatiya nyaya samhita 2023 so questions can be asked from this bns bharatiya nyaya samhita so i doubt because uh, already ugc has directed higher education institutions to promote uh, bharatiya nyaya samhita bns so questions are likely to be asked from bns rather than ips ipc okay so keep this in mind i don't think anyone might have told about this but yes you have to keep this in mind this uh, new update could be useful okay, okay. that's so p4 uh, s4 bf formula which are the 10 subject 10 high yielding subject i have covered okay so rest of the subject rest of the nine subject i will be covering in the part b of this video so rowing harder doesn't help if the boat is headed in the wrong direction that means i know that every one of you is putting your effort everyone is doing smart work everyone wants to get maximum output but if you are rowing in the wrong direction if you are going in the wrong direction if you are walking in the wrong direction then it is very difficult for you to uh, get the target that you achieved okay so right direction is what i am giving you based on not my experience not what others say not what toppers say Uh, it is purely what according to what nbms is saying okay according to what examiners have been shown uh, in the past few years according to that pattern based on statistics i am showing you the right path so hope this video helps you this uh, next uh, nine subjects uh, uh, pyq analysis i will uh, upload in the next week okay thank you